one man's journey to understand everything there is to know about sports has led to many losses, horrible gaming, mediocre questions, but the guests are cool, and videos where gaming and podcasts come on to show sports, mainly Quidditch and football, from a variety of different angles. Welcome to GameSide Chat. Now, obviously, we don't have that database, and yes, that I mean that makes sense. You know, we're new; like, it'll take a lot of work for people to like chip in and bring stuff in and make something. Yes, and also it doesn't help that instead of uh, you know, in football, you have maybe ten years to collect data or whatever, five, six years to collect data on a player. Whilst here, like, you start collecting play uh, data on this guy, and then he's like, "Oh, you know what? I'm not playing Quidditch anymore." And you're like, "Well, shit. What's the point now?" Mm -hmm. What do you think we can do now that we don't have? Well, since we don't have this database what can a team do to prepare for a game from from an analytics standpoint to me it's it's watching as much as you possibly can that is currently available mm -hmm. of any of any quality okay the video the better the video the best it will be but you can either you can either do it in two ways in my opinion you either can go looking at the team specifically so let's say i'm york and i'm about to play the olympians i could then see if there was an old game that Okay, there isn't, but imagine there was an old game that York played against the Olympians, say, in the previous season. And I can go look at explicit things, being like, we were rubbish at this, but we were fantastic at this. And we knew that we could mm -hmm. target particular players who were really good at this, but not quite as good at that. And so you can go look at the exact video analysis. The alternative would also be naturally watching every single possible game you can of the Olympians. Because something that we forget and I think is something that would often be left out of analysis at Quidditch is that there just isn't enough games played in a season to truly get like a large level of data on them. Mm. So what what I mean by that is when you're playing with football, yes, you've got all the games from previous seasons behind you where you've played 50 odd games because you've been in Europe and you've been in the Cups and you've been in the league. And you've got like 50 games for the season. And so that's a lot there where you look at the so you can look at the same player or the same team. And after 50 games, you've got a pretty solid idea how these people are going to mm. play. Even if you're prepping for something like BQC, where you go and find, let's use Olympians as example, just because it's easiest of, oh, well, I found all the all the stuff they did at Northern. You might have only played four or five games at Northern. Since then, half yeah. your players, half the players have snapped in half and the other half are bored. Like you, 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 you can't you can't prepare for it as much because you haven't been able to see the full squad. Like, say a particular, say yourself, you might go, well, I, I might envisage that you're not going to play against us because you didn't play in three of the northern games, and I've only got mm -hmm. one game in which you did. For example, that is really, really unuseful. If there was more games played during the season, you would be able to go, OK, well, yes, he only played one in Northern, but he played three here and he played five here and he played six there. Like I've now got a lot more data. And that's something that I think mm. is, is is lacking in the sport for obvious reasons. Simply the fact of people have yeah. lives. But it's as time will go on, I hope that more games will be played and it will become more of a regular thing and it won't just be defined by the tournament format. Mm -hmm. And there will be a bit like leagues and things. Now, I really love the the knockout stage and the and the, the tournament style that Quidditch runs. Maybe mm -hmm. simply because I just find it a bit different because it's not what I uh, wasn't used to. But particularly at the university level, I envisage it becoming Bucks affiliated one day where... A lot mm -hmm. of a lot of university teams will have clubs, and so they will be playing every Wednesday and Saturday, for example, playing against other unis. And with that, and more data being rising in the sport, you know, we might be able we we would see a large level of collection there. I don't necessarily know where it would happen with at the community level, um, and how mm -hmm. you'd be able to fit more games in. Whether you should fit more games in, because as I said, people people have lives. Yeah, but to me, the the key is either improved video and just generally having more matches. Neither of which are likely to happen anytime soon. But uh, video video is the key. And so, going yeah. back, I feel like a massive like ten minute tangent. Back to your original question of how do you prepare for a game? Just watch as much as you possibly can, trying to get as much on a particular player or on a team style as you can, given the time frames and the video quality because there are even in some of the most high profile teams with a lot of high quality players throughout the squad 
there are going to be certain people that will stand out. And mm-hmm. you can learn either for both good reasons and bad reasons. And so you're able to build upon that to find room and elements where you can where you can capitalize on that. Take the Olympians and go, OK, there's a lot of very bunch of very talented players here. But I know that I people that might particularly stand out. I might think of Matt Fenton and I might think of Manon and I might think of say Anna O'Gara. Let's take all three. All three mm-hmm. very different positions. You watch enough video, you might find little holes there in their game that you can capitalize on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh look, they they prefer this hand. They prefer throwing from this way. It's like, okay, so I need to approach from the other hand, so it's harder. Yeah, Fenton Fenton might be brilliant at f- sending the ball across field, but he can't but he throw can't shoot for shit. Yeah, can't shoot for shit. Exactly. <laughs> like it, it <laughs> It might it might be something simple as that. So what you're going to do is you're trying to try and you're going to try and sit off people. So you might counter yeah. that being like you can't shoot. You might sit off and sit off and just sit on your people like your Manons or your Josh Armitage or basically any Olympians chasing. You sit on them because it forces Fenton to shoot. And that using yeah. using basic video analysis, just watching enough games, you will naturally pick things up. I see a lot from people talking about where the sport goes with this in terms of the lack of high quality coaches at university level. I gained a lot of my, well, almost all of my knowledge of football by just simply watching an awful lot of it. I was never a particularly mm. talented player and I never played it extensively. I'm not, a, I'm not a former professional, but I got where I have because I watched a lot of it and was really interested in, in the fine details. There are plenty of people like me in Quidditch that would do the exact same thing and they don't all necessarily play for community teams so for me it's there is room there is there's the opportunity for this type of analysis to happen all over the country and all over different teams and not just it at the very top level nice that's a good uh that's a good positive message for a change <laughs> as well like it's not all uh doom and gloom you can kind of yeah i've i i'm a firm believer that it is not all doom and gloom and it hasn't ever really been mm. doom and gloom the entire time that I've been I've been playing, although others might I might think this. I think there's a lot of positives going on in the game and and really it, we might see a new generation of players that are, are taking it in a different a different way. So I have always believed that you always when I first joined, you always heard of the big names. You've always heard of the big names for different reasons and mm-hmm. some have views on others and some have view contrasting views on the same people. Yes, we'll like that. Oh. But but these players at the end of the day define the game. So I guess a good example of this is take the did you see the like the Hall of Fame thing that was put on a couple of months ago run by Jay and Andrew Hall? It went went on UK Quidditch no. and things. Did you not see this? No. There was a big discussion, like a really long, like 90 minute podcast talking about players, you know, like a Hall of Fame of UK Quidditch that defined the game and like and who had lasting right. impacts on it. And I largely agreed with with all of them. And there was a big debate about certain people that were omitted and, and things like this. And there was a lot of and a lot of these players I personally hadn't heard of. And but that was because they were really big sort of at the very, very beginning. Now, when they went and explained, you know, why these players were omitted or like were included, you sat there and go, yeah, that's fair enough. They seem like they did an awful lot for the game. There wasn't a lot of like brand new ones, if you know what I mean. There wasn't like Mm -hmm. people that had been within the last, say, three or four years because they really haven't had enough time to imprint their mark. But I think we Mm -hmm. will see a large influx of this in the next couple of years and the game isn't going to die. And it's just, it's being run by different people um okay it's that time time will move on and people will go well yes oh no go away oh yes get in you know people will naturally move on and go i, I want to go and do something else and you we will i will never critique anyone for doing that they're going like well thank you very much for everything you've done hope you do all right time for yeah. someone else time for someone else to move in we see it in football we see it in all other sports of these major major emphasis on you know change in Changing of the guards here, new manager or new players yeah. or new people at the top. And um, what a save. And Quinch will do the same. I think we all get scared because this might be one of the first proper transitions that the sport might go through, where we might see yeah. the next big generation because because of how new the sport is. Yeah. And that this will this will change. But that's not a bad thing. I'll just wait for my uh, mini uh, celebration here. Oh, this breaks my heart. I have still not won on my channel. God damn it. <laughs> Oh, 
dear. But yeah, but, to be fair, like I feel like it's change is always good. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm not. Yeah, I'm not saying like oh the I guess the old generation of Quidditch players are are doing they're doing bad they're ruining the sport. No, but absolutely like, not. It's always good to have new opinions. Yeah. And this this has always been my thought that that those that think differently are not wrong. They simply just have a different take on it. And if people yeah, exactly, are able to yeah. like. I don't want this to sound like it's like, well, Adam's going to lead a, Adam, like lead a revolution of new players that are all going to suddenly mm. kick out everyone else that thought this. No, absolutely not, because I don't know everything, and I never will. No, exactly. Um, yeah. and, and other people will never like know everything, and there's, and you have to admit to learn to help and admit exactly, when you're wrong. Yeah, like you More importantly, never, yeah. admit when you're wrong. But Quidditch is going in the right direction, and I might be one of the few that think this, but I do firmly believe that. And that with the likes of analytics, with the likes of more and more athletic based players coming into the sport just naturally because of its increased appeal. Like there's a lot of work, I think, being done by the likes of QUK that are mm-hmm. that are going like, well, yeah, well, we we um, we're trying to we're trying to increase the profile of the sport by doing this or doing that. Or this. And these things will work. I think some people might get a bit upset by it because of it's not happening quickly enough. Um, yeah. I mean, to be fair, I do get, get that, that argument sport. as well. It's like, because you don't have that many years in the sport, really. And then if it doesn't happen now, it probably won't happen in your thing. So I can, I kind of can see what, what the problem is. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I can, I can see, I can see why people think it. I can see why it's, it goes the way it goes, but I think sometimes we yeah. do need to admit that it's sometimes bigger than ourselves. But the likes of the likes of analytics, the likes of increased players of sporting nature, but also keeping its fundamentals. The fact it is a fun, different sport that is focused on yeah. inclusivity, like it is entirely unique, and it's why we all love it, and why we put so much effort into it, and why we have conversations like this, is that yeah. it is it is fundamentally a unique sport that allows and accepts all varieties of people but change is good and change can yeah. and can and will can and will happen but it needs new people or it just needs generally more people to push through these new better ideas yeah you, you think about it in the time it's been within like seven or eight years that sports been in the uk we've gone from these pathetic little like broom things with like the actual tassels on the end and it's all a weird shape and if you shout harry potter references you get sent off and now it moves to a genuine like a well-adapted sport that has yeah. elements of rugby has elements of handball has elements of all sorts of sports actually that brings me on to a good point of how how would you help improve analysis of the sport you need to mm-hmm. take it from other sports so i've taken all of my yeah. views on data analytics because of how it's used in football but in other training Bruce, you can take this from other sports so in my first year i mentioned that i did water polo and i did it my second year as well at, at uni and i've been swimming for ages so but the way they're so they set up sort of a passing lane and how water polo sort of works is that you pass around in a bit of an arc shape a lot of the time yeah. passing from one another and you're getting people moving enough like the the defenders to move enough to find a gap and you shoot that is so mm. similar to chasers with the keeper going around yeah. the hoops so so similar and so you watch water polo footage you watch netball you watch rugby you watch handball there's so many sports you can take it from to find little things to be like and finding that little edge so Although it might sound like what we really need is this mammoth database that's going to solve all the analytics problems for every Quidditch <laughs> player under the sun, and and how we, and how players will never get left behind, and that everyone will continue to improve, and the sport will become an absolute global phenomenon. But that's a long way away, and we can find the little things and those little differences beforehand. So, say I I'm going to use the example of when I watched EQT this year i thoroughly enjoyed quite watching a lot of the plays run by lqc the reason i really Mm -hmm. liked them is the way any of the keepers would shout was shouting as if they were shouting american football like calls and formations and it was just that simple loud thing and they every player in lqc would suddenly change and suddenly move into a different formation and it looked fantastic and it looked amazing and they won a lot of games doing it because it kept people guessing there's a lot of there's an element of a lot of american football could be used on say on the chaser side now i'm not going to speak too much for the beta side simply because i've never been a beta but i bet there's other i bet there's plenty of sports that use a similar chasing sort of pressing format you might say to, well football football might even be a good example you look at your say 
take take Liverpool or more specifically Jurgen Klopp when he was at Borussia Dortmund, he was famous for a system known as the Gagan Press. And this is a very high intensity, high press style that forces the players into making a mistake or the opponents to make a mistake. Is that not yeah. the same as beating? Pretty much the same. Well, yeah, like, it, is quite, it is quite similar, yeah. But it doesn't have Especially to necessarily the be... the high press of beaters. Exactly. Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be identical. But if you can see those little steps or that little similarities, people, as a result, will improve. So I think, you know, you take you watch a load of water polo footage and people will say, oh, I see. Now I can see why I need to be in this particular space as opposed to that one. Because otherwise, someone's going to be sat on the top of me and tackle me before I, you know, as soon as I've got my hands on the ball. Mm-hmm. Or I'm a beater and I don't quite know where I should be looking to press what angle should i be going at watch what they were doing watch watch what Klopp was doing at dortmund so i think to me that's how analytics will go is it's not just the massive database as much as i'd like that to happen and and it, i think it would see the uk as a whole massively improve on the global stage yes we're already a very high profile team and the team uk is an incredibly strong squad and has some very very talented players in xpan will naturally has always been designed to bring in the next level of team uk well x should not just come from the high-profile community teams that are known by, that are good friends with the coaches of Team UK or the coaches of x because they've seen so much of them. You know, say, I don't know, take the Team UK coaches are, say, I know they're all based in like the South bit, but maybe, maybe there's some hidden talent that deserves an x call-up, not Team UK, but an x call-up from Durham or from Banger or from Falmouth where all parts of the world that aren't typically given much of a look in. With the analytics and with the general improvement of the game, these people will be spotted and they'll get their expand choices and then it's up to them to grow further. Yeah, yeah, because that's what Jay was talking about. Like They only have like, what, two or three scouts that can't be at all the games and that's kind of the only way they do look at it. Exactly. My, my rebuttal would be so... there's never really been much of a, a push to, to expand that because people are busy true, and are true. focusing on other things. I would I personally would like to be to find a way that we could we could get more of those and and have more scouts working for a certain system. So take Jay, obviously Team UK coach, like he's gonna to want to play a certain style, or Team UK on the, on the whole are gonna to want to play a certain style. Let's try and find those players that meet the style from all over the country and not just from your Raptors and your LQCs and your werewolves. Is there mm. is there someone hidden in a Durham or a York that can can make the difference? True, and fill in a spot that they need specifically. Right. Yeah. So you've completely embarrassed me, mate. Thank <laughs> you for that. <laughs> Do you have any more things you want to bring up? Um. No, I think generally just the idea of it's not all doom and gloom. Quidditch is very much mm-hmm. far from it. There's a lot of room where this sport will grow. Analytics is one of them, and both video and data and. For any coaches or for any future teams, look at footage from other sports. Just try and find those little similarities that can give your team that edge because no team should ever be just considered as, oh, well, I'm not good enough. We're just a small club or we're permanently a dev team cup, uh, like a dev cup yeah. team forever. No, because you see it go both ways. People talk about, granted, I was never there. You saw the big names of your Oxfords and your Bangers and, and Keels and things. And, and sometimes we see those clubs go one way, e.g. Banger and Keel, for example, you know, up the top and, and now they're now they're trying really hard and developing lots of young new players at a dev cup level. So they've gone arguably down in stature. But then you get the rise of the likes of like LQC are brand new within the last two years. Uh, Olympians brand new this year, both of them now in the top six, probably in the UK. Mm-hmm. And 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 things change, but that doesn't necessarily make it a bad thing. Um and that these players can rise and maybe the university teams, some university teams might be able to push it more than current community teams. But if they don't, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just showing the mm-hmm. sport is getting bigger and those at the top are fighting against those that are the very best. And we should let that happen. Yeah. But true, yeah, true. nothing uh, awe inspiring to say there. It's just thank you very much for having me. Maybe just have a chat and oh, more you're welcome, mate. to beat the beloved Mr. Yeah. Spaceman of Football Manager. Like, so. <laughs> I think what I might do now is I might make yeah. my own channel and uh, and show him how it's done, shall I? I mean, yeah, you should, man. I, I should I should actually quit and stop doing this from now on. <laughs> yeah, let's just because uh, some someone was it uh, I don't remember who said, but someone said like, oh, it's because I'm trying to he- sit here and come up with questions. So yeah, let's let's use that as an excuse.
Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed having the more... Because always a lot of the stuff we talk about, it's more from the Quidditch side. This is more of a... For the first time, I think we've talked from outside the Quidditch and try to connect it to something else, which I think is really cool. And like the thing you said about, you know, how we should look to other sports for inspiration and shouldn't be just like, oh, yeah, Quidditch, you know, like this is how it's been done for years. Like, no, no, look, look what football does. Look what water polo does, you know, that kind of stuff. So I think that's cool. Yeah, I, I completely agree. We are, we rightly should be very proud of all the unique things about Quidditch. And there is a lot of very oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. fantastic, unique parts of it. But just because it yeah. does things differently doesn't mean it has to be on its own. Yeah. And, and that's a good thing. And that's a good thing, and it, and it will and it will foster new improvements, whether it's through new individuals or not. The point is, the sport will naturally get better as time goes on, if people stay passionate. And there's plenty of reasons to still yeah. stay passionate, in my eyes. It might not necessarily be run by the same people as time goes on, but I don't think anyone really thinks that's entirely a bad thing, or at least I hope they don't. Okay, man. Thanks for coming. Like I said, it was great having you. My pleasure. And yeah, I guess this is the end of the episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, don't forget to leave a comment about what I should ask, or maybe who I should talk to, or even what games I should play. Alright, bye guys!